Explorer Anthology is really pushing these heroic hoplites. How good are they? And can we build an effective budget deck in blue-white with heroic? Let's find out. Hey, 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 welcome to the Attic Man of Dad here. Gonna play midweek event Explorer. I got lots of other Explorer decks um, that I've done videos on if you want to check those out. But this is expressly a budget deck. Maybe you don't really have an Explorer deck to play and you don't really want to invest a lot of wild cards, but you want to kind of try out some of these new cards from Explorer Anthology. Favored Hoplite, which is a 1-2 for 1 that gets um, plus 1 plus 1 counter when you cast a spell that targets it. And Battlewise Hoplite, which Hoplite, which gives a plus 1 plus 1 counter and scries when you cast a spell that targets it is a 2-2. Two, two. Um, I'm playing four of these. My instinct is that this deck would actually be better <laughs> with other cards than these, but I have already gotten my two wins in the midweek event with this, but we will play it and show you. I've done a couple changes since I won with the deck, so let's see if I've improved the deck even more. Um, you can absolutely substitute Illuminator Virtuoso, I believe, for Battlewise Hoplite. Uh, Security Bypass is another one. I just have one of in the deck currently, but uh, you could maybe find room. And uh, I think Delver of Secrets is probably better than Favorite Hoplite. So you can ch play around with the amounts of those. I've also got a one of fun of Fairy Guide Mother. Um, let's just go through the rest of the deck here. Uh, of course, we got four of Defiant Strike, which is plus one plus zero, draw a card, which is great. We got the Fairy Guide Mother, which is mainly to launch these guys into the air. I don't think you need to play Fairy Guide Mother if you're not playing these heroic guys. But they're, they're ground guys. They will get big, but we need to get them up in the air and make them evasive. So that is what Fairy Guide Mother is good at and Security Bypass also. God's willing, we end up using this for evasion a lot, um, giving them protection from a color. It also gives us a scry, which is nice. Curious Obsession, of course, you want to pop this on a uh, guy and be getting in and drawing extra cards. And then we're going to protect our guys with Slip Out the Back, Spell Pierce. March of Swirling Mist is great because it can protect our guys and it can also trigger multiple heroic triggers. And then, of course, Storm Chaser Drake draws cards that has doesn't have heroic keyworded here, but it has the same thing where if it gets targeted, we're going to draw a card. Staggering Insight, uh, our copies five and six of Curious Obsession. It's plus one, plus one. Whenever it deals damage, you draw a card. And it, in this case, it also gets lifelink, which is quite good. And um, in the right burn matchups can just shut down the game pretty quickly. And then um, 18 lands, but we do have two Sajiri Shelters, so it's pseudo 20 lands. It's a very land light deck. Um, definitely, if you're playing best of three, probably um, add more lands. <laughs> but for best of one, you can you can uh, kind of trick the arena shuffler into uh, giving you better draws. Um, some cards I considered here in the sideboard: Boon of Safety, Jiru's Resolve, which untaps and prevents all damage, and then you can cycle it. The untap can be a real um, good trick fight as one is interesting because uh those two guys are both humans and some of the other creatures in our deck are not so you could target multiple creatures with one mana instant here and um give indestructible which could be pretty good um so there's a there's a possibility of a deck build that uses four of, of this and then we got gird for battle which can also target two creatures here but it is sorcery speed Guiding Voice, which is a plus one, and you can learn, so you can go get another spell. Uh, Dive Down is a classic one in this kind of, I guess they call it a fish deck, just um, gives a hexproof and plus zero, plus three for one blue mana. Maximize Altitude is another one we can play twice, although it is a sorcery, but it does give flying, which I think might be useful. So there might be a build of this where you want to maximize, maximize Altitude. Uh, Homestead Courage is a plus one, plus one, and Vigilance that you can repeat, also Sorcery Speed. And then uh, Sheltering Light is another one I considered here. Instant Speed, Indestructible, plus a Scry one. I think God's Willing is just better. But if you decide you need extra copies of that, that's good. Um, because, of course, there are so many Exile effects that Protection doesn't hit it. So, I'm a very small channel. If you've found your way here... Um, Thanks for stopping by. 
Um, we're going to get into the gameplay in just a sec, but let me make my pitch for you to interact with the channel by subscribing, rating, leaving a comment, something, because there's no guarantee the almighty Google YouTube algorithm will ever send you my content or the content of other small magic creators again. So any interaction is much appreciated. And if you are a contrary person, definitely do not interact with this video. Okay, now let's get to the play. Midweek event, Azorius Heroic. Don't know what we'll be up against. Could definitely be some tryharders. We got none of the cards we're looking to test out. We do have Illuminator Virtuoso and Storm Chaser Drake, which are quite good. So let's keep those. Okay, red, blue. Moon Snare Prototype, some kind of artifacts fill, but I think we might be safe to um, run out of creature turn one. Let's try it. If we can draw that third land, we'll have to get out Storm Chaser on three. Huh. So we've got a Storm Stone Coil Serpent. Um, the sensible thing is probably to drop the Illuminator Virtuoso. But you know what? Why could we do that? Why should we do that when we can do this? Okay, now we gotta lose something. Um... We just all in on this favorite hoplite. Yeah, why not? We we came here to test out this card, right? Let's hope they don't bounce it. They've got potential four mana here. Okay, they're gonna insole artifact on the stone coil serpent. That's pretty good. That is another new card with this um, I think we can march of swirling mist for two here. Prophetic Prism. Yeah, sure. Draw your card. Graph Digger's Cage. Oh, well, I don't plan to cast any spells from my library, so that's fine. Um... Again, they don't seem to have a lot of interaction, so. Oh, okay. They decided they were done. As I said, I already got my two wins here with the heroic deck, just testing it out for you guys. But. I usually don't play for the third win because I don't need the, uh, I don't really collect the card styles, but there you go. That's, that's the card style I got. I got a unicorn, a full art unicorn. Hope you liked it. Shedding some light on the situation. Definitely recommend, even if you don't play the format of a midweek event, that you play out two games, get your rare, get your rares, free rares. Um, and who knows? Maybe you'll like the format. Play play your midweek events. That's my recommendation. Okay, we're up against Taco Mako. The Taco Mage. This looks like a good hand to me. Once again, favorite hoplite on one. I think it's a big if if they have no interaction. But if they have no interaction. We can pop the Staggering Insight and go to town. Oh, they're red. 
Okay, well, let's get blue mana down immediately. Um, I think we'll just keep holding up Spell Pierce here. Okay. Nothing happened. Oh. Uh, oh no, I needed, I needed to drop a blue mana. Drat. Let's just get in. Okay, so they're red green. Let's pop. Let's play the Illuminator Virtuoso past the turn. Fabla of the Mirror Breaker. It's a good card. Probably should have spell pierced it. Whoopsie. I'll pay two life here. So let's. Put that on there. We'll discard... Oh, yeah, I think I just gotta discard a land here. So every time that hits, look at this. Every time that hits, we're gonna draw a card. That's just ridiculously good. Um, yeah, we'll pass the turn. So we got Sajiri Shelter and Spell Pierce here. There's options to protect our creatures. They're at 9 life currently. Okay. Oh, they got white. Okay. They're Naya. What are they doing with their Naya? Sticky fingers. Sure. Um... we do this, we don't have a blue mana. I think we'll just let them attack and get their treasures. Better that than then we get wrecked by uh, some kind of kill spell here. Yetmir. Nexus of Revels. Okay. Well, now we can, uh, let's pay three, use that to pay two of it, target, target, target. Actually, we should have discarded Battlewise Hoplite. Um, that should be lethal, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, opponent did the math. And that is blue-white heroic. Stick around, I'll talk a bit about the budget of the deck. Okay, so that was uh, pretty good. 2-0. Oh. Um, definitely did lose some games in the testing, but uh, the rare occasion where I start recording and I just win. Uh, maybe, maybe it was the changes that I made. Illuminator Virtuoso, as you saw, is pretty good. So, if you're building this deck, um, I do absolutely recommend four of your rare wild cards on March of Swirling Mist. Everything else is common or uncommon, except for I'm running Hallowed Fountain and Hengegate Pathways. If you got a couple of these, and then just fill out the rest with um, basic lands. If you don't have any of these, you could still do it with basic lands. You're going to be a little less consistent. But really, the only thing that you're trying to hit on turn two is Battlewise Hoplite, which, as we saw, can just be replaced by Illuminator Virtuoso. And then Staggering Insight, um, you don't need to play that until a later turn, necessarily, because you want to be able to play it and hold up protection, like Spell Pierce or God's Willing. Have some backup here so you don't get blown out. Is playing auras can get you blown out so that is the deck thank you so much for joining me here in the attic and remember magic is a game so fun even dads can enjoy it